as you can see, I have devised a plan for how to solve this task. And looking at, it pl at the plan, it looks a little bit complicated, but I think that together we can solve it. But before we start writing any code for it, we need a script, so I'll create one for us. And now that we have a script where we can write our code, let's look at what we need to do. So if we start here, we can see that we need a main function. And the first thing that we're going to do is that we're going to initialize the list to make it empty. And after that, we're going to have a loop where we stay in the loop as long as the user wants to do more changes. And imagine that we want to change something, that we want to write our countries. So we go in, what should we do? The first thing we do is print the menu. And when we print the menu, we can see that we call another function, which is this one. And when I was thinking about it, I think we need a, a header for our menu, so it looks a little bit nicer. Then we print all the countries that we have entered so far. And then we need a way of exiting our script. So we have our countries, we have an exit option, and then we return back. When we have printed that to the screen, we let the user input an option or a choice. And depending on what the user inputs, we will either update our list with the selected countries and add them to the list or change the list and go back. But if they choose the last option here to print exit then we are done and we should exit the, our loop meaning that the script ends. So what will I do now? I will start by adding this function here. So let's start with that. And now I have added a little bit of code for this function, print menu. And if we take a look at it, because there are a few interesting uh, bits and pieces here. Countries is going to be our list, the thing that we want to print. That is one thing that is interesting. How can we use this to print the countries? But what do, we, what do we do here? We see that the first thing that we should do is print a header so that it looks nicer. So I have this one here. And then we print all the countries. But here is something interesting because we have seen for, uh, for loops before and we have used for loops as looking at an index in a range. So for example, take a loop loop from 1 to 10. We can use a loop to get each country in a list using the in operator here, so country in countries. But here we need both of them. We need both index and country. And what we can do then is that we can use enumerate or enumerate. And what this does is that we, it allows us to use a for loop where we get both the content of the list but also the index. And we can see that we need that in the loop because how are we printing each and every option? We are printing the number, so the index, it starts at zero, but we increase it to one. So the list will go from one, two, three, and so forth. And then we see that, all right, we don't end the line so we print a number and then we don't end the line. Instead, we print either not assigned yet or the country that is on that index in the list. So if we haven't given a country yet, it will print not assigned. Otherwise, if we have stored a country at that index in the list, it will print country. So for this here, we actually needed to write a lot of code. But we can see we have it here. And the last bit here is that we print the exit so that the user knows that they can exit our script. 
Let's go on to write the main function. Let me see there. All right. What I'm going to write here is that I'm first going to initialize the list. Then we are going to create the loop. So we continue in the loop as we discussed before. And here we call this function that we just created. And depending on the uh, input from the user, we either update the list. This is probably the most interesting part just now. Or otherwise, we mark it in the script that we are done so that the loop can finish. But how would it code for this look? Let's see. Okay, let's take a look at what we have in the code here. We start by saying that we want a list. We're going to call it countries. And to begin with, we are going to add three empty countries. What does it mean that they are empty? It means that when we try to print them, you can see that we're comparing to a country that is empty here. Then we would print the not assigned yet. So that is why they're empty to begin with. We will also say that we want three of them. So it's an easy way of declaring how many we want. After that, we create a loop that keeps running as long as this variable is true. In the loop, we print the countries. We see that we should do that here, print menu. Or it prints the menu, but it at the same time prints the countries that we have entered so far. We'll see it when we run it, what I mean by that. Then we ask the user to change one. So they have a choice here. And depending on the choice, we either update the country. We can see here if, if the choice the user enters or inputs is one, two, or three, we will update the list with a new country. Otherwise, if it is nine, we exit the loop. Let's try to run it and see how it works. So we can see here, all right, they are not assigned to begin with. And let me assign a country. I'm, I want the, the first one to be maybe Ethiopia. And I want my second one to be Mozambique. And the third one, I want it to be Mongolia. All right, but maybe I changed my mind. I want the first one to be Namibia. And here, now I'm satisfied with my list. So what if I select nine to exit the, exit the, the loop and exit the script? Let's see if that works. Seems to be working too. So here we have it, and there are a few things to point out. The list, you must know how to use lists, and here we initialize it with three empty strings. We are sending the list as an argument to our function up here, where we use enumerate when we have our for loop to get both the index and the content at that index. 